let's talk about the dumpster fire known as the Indiana Pacers. This is a mess. Uh, this season's been pretty terrible for a team that I had projected to finish top four or top five in the Eastern Conference, and they've severely underperformed. And it's came out recently that a lot of it has to deal with head coach Nate Bjorkgren. Uh, he was hired this year, he was an assistant coach to Nick Nurse, and there is a ton that came out about him pretty much just this morning in an article detailed by Bleacher Report. I believe his name is Jake Fisher was the uh, uh, the author of this article, but the Pacers severely underperformed. They're sitting in the ninth seed, the ninth seed in the Eastern Conference. They're pretty much just a half game ahead of the Wizards for that ten. <laughs> they might just be dropping down to that tenth seed spot. And yeah, I mean, people are saying T.J. Warren decided to opt out of the season because he literally did not want to play for Nate Bjorkren, who. You're wondering why did he think that? Well, he's actually an assistant coach for the Suns between 2015 and 2017, in which, you know, TJ Warren was part of the team. And that's just a theory that's not confirmed. But Nate Bjorkren seems to be the crux of a lot of issues here. Like, all of them. <laughs> uh, I've talked about this Pacers team. I pretty much said they've lost their identity. If Nate McMillan wasn't a great coach, then why have they gone so far downhill? Why does this team why is this team totally unreminiscent of their last season? Why are they a totally different roster when it should be operating just the same way as a few years ago? Because they have a lot of the same pieces. You still have Brogdon, you still have Sabonis, you still have Turner. You now have Karis Levert to operate as your scorer because TJ Warren's injured. And they still can't figure it out. TJ McConnell's having an amazing season. They still can't figure it out. And a lot of it has to deal with head, co head coach Nate Bjorkren. And we'll get into it. And I'm going to be doing a read-along of an article. That's something I haven't done in a long time. But it's a really, really good article. So I'm going to be do reading that article to you in this video. And before I get into that, maybe scroll down and click subscribe. But anyway, it does sound like Nick Mjorkren will be fired by the end of the year. They're just letting him finish out his one season with the team. I mean, that makes sense. You don't want to fire a head coach with like eight games left in the season. They're probably not making it into the playoffs. Let's be real. They're not beating the Wizards. And okay, it feels unlikely they're going to be the Wizards. And it sounds like Nate Bjorken will be fired immediately after the season ends. So after reading the article, I'll go through what's the future for this Pacers team. But let's take a look at this article by Jake Fisher released this morning. Uh, injuries and challenges due to health and safety protocols have plagued the Pacers this season. But a lot of this, a lot of the credit for this team's not very successful season should be Nate Bjorken. This te the crumbling team chemistry is because of Nate Bjorkren. And yeah, we just heard like just a few nights ago that he was on the hot seat and it wasn't really apparent up until that point. He's just very different, a league executive who has worked previously Bjorkren. He's not really, um, you know, too rude. He's just completely out of his elements as a leader. He didn't come in relationship building in an easy way from day one. And his communication style is pretty aggressive. You know, he's just rude to everyone, and he just changes on the flip of a dime. He goes from being this really nice guy, the great face for the public, to being loud and angry and yelling. And you need a lot more communication when you're trying to get things done. And he actually is quoted right here for saying communication is an enormous part of this. When you're yelling and being insincere, you're not listening to your other people. That's the opposite of your of communication. Can we be real here? I guess he just doesn't know the definition of the word. But uh, yeah, Nate McMillan was originally fired because they wanted to do better than the fourth and the fifth seed every single year, and uh, that hasn't been the case. Um, they particularly didn't like Nate, Nate McMillan, slower pace scheme, 30th and NBA three-point attempts. They wanted to bring in a statistics guy like Nick Nurse. Uh, they're a big fan of Nick Nurse over the Pacers team in front office. And, yeah, this guy, uh, Pritchard, I'm forgetting what his first name is, you know, the general manager or something, something or another, 
The guy is hiring the head coach, doing the interviews. He wants a Nick Nurse type guy. And what better person to go to than a guy who's coming from the Nick Nurse head coaching tree. And uh, Nate Bjorkren is the guy they brought in. They interviewed a ton of coaches, like 20 candidates. And let's be real, they did not do a good job during their interviews. They did not collect background sources. They did not talk to people he's communicated with in the past. And yeah, uh, they like Nick Nurse, so they want a coach just like Nick Nurse. And uh, he's also friends with uh, Chris Finch, and apparently Finch and Nurse were two of the final candidates when it came down to the Pacers' uh, choice at, at the head coach. But Bjorkgren won over Indiana Brass with, Brass with an overwhelmingly positive energy during the interview process. But as you'll see later, he will flip um, very, very quickly to being angry and being rude. But yeah, he rose through the G League head coaching ranks just like Nick Nurse, so of course they like this kind of rise. And they did a, a lengthy search. It did take them quite a while to hire a head coach. And he's also friends with another guy in the front office named Buchanan. I don't know exactly who it was. But they really did not do enough background checks here. Especially when he was with the Suns from 2015 to 2017. They didn't think to consider the opinion of TJ Warren, who played under Bjorkren and Phoenix. They didn't even ask him about him at all. And uh, right here, it theorizes that... Warren decided to not play with the team because he didn't want to play for Bjorken. And they did not do their background on who Bjorken was or how he treated people, said one person close to the coaching search. They just talked hoops with him. It was the missing intel that foreshadowed the very interpersonal issues that have risen that have since risen in Indiana. Um when I was hired, uh, when he was hired, I was surprised because he's not one of the easiest to work with on anything, said a former G League player, Bjorkren. He's stubborn, won't listen, even though it might be a good conversation. He's a micromanager and he's not from everyone. Uh, the frustration level at the little things going wrong in a practice did, <laughs> didn't match up with the issues. Like, he was erupting at staffers, like the ball boy and the, you know, guys who bring him water. <laughs> It's just kind of like, he's really hard on his staff. He expected a lot for them without giving a lot of ownership or trust back. He didn't really respond when they were doing their jobs well. And, yeah, I mean, uh, another thing is he was really pushy as an assistant coach with Earl Watson, who's kind of, uh, he's kind of lame for the Suns. He kind of just got in early and orchestrated the path for himself. He was really only doing it for himself when he was a, an assistant coach like he was pushing for his own job even though he is with the team with Earl Watson with the team that's trying to win games he's more concerned about himself and not about his players and it's just like he another thing is just like totally crazy is he micromanaged all the communication going on with the Raptors front office uh, he would not let a player talk to Nick Nurse without talking to him first and he chose which players could go to talk to Nick Nurse. And this would be okay if Nick Nurse had been had instructed him to do so. No, he did this on his own. Nick Nurse was totally unaware of the situation. And that's just like, that's just not good. And yeah, I mean, it's just like, man. Uh, but... Things started off well for the Pacers franchise. He, he was really directing practice, even in the preseason, their early training camps. He was directing it, you know, in a time that most head coaches usually step back and sit back and watch what happens with his team. He was directing it, yelling in a positive rah-rah, clapping way. He wasn't afraid to jump in a drill if he needed to, said another Indiana staffer. Everyone was saying he's the mo utmost positive person. It was infectious. And they started 6-2 on the season. Everything seemed to be going well. They started with a 3-0 run. I don't know why it goes from 6-2 six, six and two to 3-0. It looked weird to me when I was reading the article for the first time. But Sabonis told reporters that Bjorkman was a genius. He knows the game and he trusts us. And Malcolm Brogdon says, We've got a coach that motivates us. Great with the X's and O's, which is a problem with Nate McMillan in the past. He stays calm. We feed off of him. And... It's just like, uh, Sabonis decided to talk to Bjorkman once about being kinder to the staff, and also Sabonis said, please don't 
switch me every single possession. And actually, uh, Sabonis leads the league in total distance travel on defense because they keep switching him. So I think that's a pretty legitimate claim right there. And he also did some questionable things like putting Doug McDermott and Justin Holiday on bigger players or quicker players, which uh, it just doesn't work, especially when you have other talented players who can defend those quicker and bigger players on your roster. He's trying to coach a team that he doesn't have, said one Pacer staffer. He's trying to fit the system to the players and not the other way around. And shortly after Christmas, word began to circulate. Come on, this dude's only been with the team for two months. Word began to circulate that Bjorkman was indeed prone to screaming at longtime Indiana staffers, just as he'd done in the G League. His niceness and infectious positivity seen during his interview and training camp began to come across to several Indiana staffers as insincere. That's how he is in general, added one Indiana staffer. He's got like a Jekyll and Hyde type thing, you know, chained on a dime. And it's just like, I don't know. And also they saw, they said that his, when he talked to the rest of management, he was pretty insincere. He used buzzwords like disruption and change and didn't really say anything substantial. He didn't offer any background on himself or his family. And he didn't talk for more than 90 seconds. He didn't even have 90 seconds of things to say about this team. Like, it's just, it's just weird. He was pretty bubbly. I mean, he's good at being in the present. He's good at, at speaking to the press. He's good at speaking to the people. Pretty bubbly, to the point where it didn't seem genuine, actually said another Indian voice. It was strange. And then the short fuse goes off. And people were, people are angry at him. He doesn't mind embarrassing his coaches. He called out the coaches who were running warm-up drills. And it's just like, or shoot-around drills. That's that's kind of, you, you don't trust your G League. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't trust your assistant coaches. And uh, that's pretty much unheard of. And talking about, um, sorry, Greg Foster's explosion and dude, his just he just boiled over and totally went off on I believe Goga Bataze. And uh, yeah, he's just mad about how this team's being run, and he took it out on Bataze, got suspended for it. Actually, had to be restrained by Miles Turner. That's uh, kind of not good. And Indiana still is slated to appear in the play-in tournament and could possibly end up in the playoffs, but I really doubt it at this point. But you do have to wonder. How will this affect the management going forward? And that's what we'll talk about here. Uh, it seems like Indiana management might, might be getting fired, like the president of basketball operations and the general manager, and of course the coach, just because it hasn't worked out. And it makes sense. I think if they are going in the direction of a new head coach, I think they should switch up the management as well. And the leading candidate for that coaching role is, of course, Mike D'Antoni, who is believed to be the leading candidate last year. He still doesn't have a head coaching job. And I'm going to say right now, I think that's a good fit. I don't know if Mike D'Antoni's the best coach with the X's and O's either. Uh, he's just like Nate McMillan there. But your team had a defensive identity that was built by Nate McMillan. And then... You know, Bjorken decided to throw it out the window and tried to reformat this entire defense. It did not work. And I think these players still have the defensive capabilities. I mean, all these guys were still with the team with Nate McMillan. A lot of these guys, other than Karis LeVert, all your key pieces were with Nate McMillan. They know how to play defense. So you don't need to worry too much about bringing in a bad, a bad defensive head coach like Mike D'Antoni. Especially a guy like Mike D'Antoni, who will get your team shooting threes. You know, the issue we talked about earlier. He's going to create threes. He doesn't have a hardened type weapon, but I think he can draw up a few plays that work when you consider how much offensive firepower this team has. With Malcolm Brogdon and Karis LeVert and TJ Warren and DeMontis Sabonis. He's not going to laser into any one of them. He's going to make plays that work and turn into buckets and turn into open threes. He's really going to like having a player like Miles Turner who can both shoot threes and protect the rim. And it's just like the perfect... I think it's a perfect co coaching scenario for Mike D'Antoni to enter. And, I mean, maybe it's not the best for the Pacers. Maybe they're not being their 
maybe they're not having their ceiling elevated to being like, uh, you know, a contender in the East, but at least you're getting back on track to being good. And then from there, you talk about making moves with this roster. I, I don't really know what the future of this team is. You get rid of TJ Warren with now Karis LeVert. Is that too much of a class to have both Karis and TJ Warren? I think that's a conversation to be had, but not right now. I think Malcolm Brogdon's extremely underrated. It makes sense to hold on to him. What's the situation with Sabonis and Turner? Uh, I think I think they would keep Sabonis and Turner if they brought in Mike D'Antoni. Just because they would treat Sabonis more as a wing, which maybe isn't the best thing in the world. But I think uh, D'Antoni would treat him as a wing, treats Turner as their center, and I think they would end up making that work. But yeah, it's an interesting situation. It's a dumpster fire, and it was caused by that guy, Nate Bjorkman. So I hope you guys enjoyed the article and enjoyed the video. That was a fantastic article. That's why I wanted to read through it. And yeah, uh, thanks for watching this video. Maybe click like, maybe click subscribe. I don't know. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.